Greetings viewers, Eric Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1, when I post videos on this channel. And I start things off here in ETCG1 with, hey, if it is your birthday, I want to wish you a very happy birthday and offer you this digital confection that I found for you on the internet. Celebrate. Before I get too far into this, I should probably date this video. It is January 2025, so we're 10 years out from all this stuff happening. Now let's get started. Today I'd like to talk about 2035, the year 2035, when many countries, states have mandated that by that time the only vehicles sold in their locations will be zero emissions. And uh, I'm sure a lot of us have strong feelings on this topic. I went through the internet and pulled some facts out and some things that I think are interesting that I'm going to share with you now. Um, first, let's start off with those places that are talking about this ban on the sale of uh, emissions vehicle or ICE vehicles. And that would be California, the European Union, the UK, Japan, and New York. Those are the places that have said that by 2035, zero emissions vehicles are the only vehicles that will be sold in our locations. Also included in that is Iceland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, um, Slovenia. Um, as far as what the manufacturers are doing, this is what I found. Uh, General Motors says they're only going to produce zero emissions vehicles by 2035. General Motors is, if not the biggest, the second biggest auto manufacturer on the planet. Toyota, I think, might be the biggest. So they're saying zero emissions vehicle by 2035. That's huge. Uh, Ford has signed a zero emissions declaration. That's what they've said. What that means, I'm not really sure. Jaguar has said zero emissions by 2025. We all saw the ad. Uh, Land Rover, zero emissions by 2035. Nissan says zero emissions by 2030. Honda says 80% by 2035. And since Honda and Nissan look like they're merging, I'm sure that may change. VW has committed to producing low carbon steel for sports and luxury vehicles. That's what they've said. They've got some stuff going on. We could do a video about that at some point. So the U.S. government, what they have said, and the U.S. government buys vehicles for their fleet so government employees drive around in these vehicles and and you know they may they use them for all kinds of stuff so the government buys vehicles and I'm sure manufacturers are very happy when the government buys vehicles because that instead of you walking in and buying one vehicle they go in and buy a hundred of them which is awesome for that company that said this is what the US government has said the US government said hundred percent zero emissions acquisition by 2035 so by 2035 the only thing the US government is going to be purchasing as far as vehicles are going to be zero emissions vehicles they also said including 100% light duty acquisition by 2027 I interpret that as you know their their trucks their their light trucks their cars um, a lot of that part of the fleet they're only going to be purchasing EV in 2027. I found that pretty interesting. So I had this question. I said to myself, how many vehicles are on the road now in the U.S.? And the answer I came up with was just under 300, vehicle, 300 million vehicles are registered in the U.S. as of 2024. Actually, it's 290 some million, but I rounded up. And they say by the time 20, 2035 rolls around that one in four vehicles will be zero emissions. So that means 25% of the fleet that's out there. So if the fleet remains the same at around 300 million, that means that we're going to have to produce 75 million EV vehicles or zero emissions vehicles in order to meet that target. So 75 million vehicles we're going to be producing. And that means we're also going to be taking a certain number of other vehicles off the road because they will be replaced by these EVs. I think this needs to be brought up and this needs to be said because when you dispose of something and throw it away, that's resource heavy. That's not very helpful. Just putting that out there. But I thought that that was interesting. The other thing I thought was interesting is the average age of a vehicle in the U.S. is 12.6 years. So the vehicles that we're driving now, I'm driving actually the 2005 that I drove here today. I've got a 2003. My newest vehicle is a 2012. All of them run great. I'm in no hurry to replace any of them. And a lot of you may be in the same place. So when we get to 2035, what happens? Well, that means model year 2022 is the model year that according to these statistics, would be the most prevalent thing on the road. So by 2035, everything's not going to be EV necessarily, but they're hoping the majority of the vehicles on the road will be EV. However, if statistics hold true, the average age of the vehicle on the road is going to be about 13 years. So we're looking at 21, 22s driving around. So that got me thinking, okay, 
Well, if we're still driving our 13 year old vehicles in 2035 and they're, you know, it's not really helping emissions. Like if they're looking at the emissions over the next 10 years and they're not seeing a reduction after making all this effort, I wonder what they're gonna do. Maybe they'll do something like say, hey, we'll raise the price of fuel to make people buy EV vehicles. Maybe tax it and do something like that. That's always been my concern. My concern is not that they'll say, "Oh, you can only drive an internal combustion, or you can only drive an EV vehicle. You can't drive internal combustion." Instead, I think they'll go after our fuel cost and, and go through it that way. Which got me to another question. I said to myself, "Okay, <clears throat> if the world goes EV, what happens in the Middle East? The Middle East is where the majority of oil used to come from. It's it's since changed around a bit, but if you take a region like a Middle East." where a lot of their economy is centered around oil production and oil refinement and we're not buying as much of that what does that do to their economies what does that do to those people who are doing that now i did do some reading and they said the middle east is doing what they can to adjust their economy for this future of well not being petroleum producers I'm curious about that right there, uh, how that all pans out. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm not saying I know what's gonna happen. I just found some facts and I'm asking questions and I'm posing them to you to see what you think about these questions as well. So then I went a little bit further and I said, okay, well, if we're trying to solve an emissions problem with all these EVs, what are the biggest polluters on the planet? How does that break down? And it breaks down like this. Um, it says that vehicle emissions contribute to 10% of global CO2 emissions. So 10% of CO2 emissions, there are other emissions by vehicles, are attributed to the cars and things that we drive. And CO2, that's, that's not good for the atmosphere. Well, in large abundance anyway. In the US, vehicles are responsible for 20% of greenhouse gases is what they're talking about. So 20% of the greenhouse gases produced are coming from our vehicles, which is a pretty small percentage because there's still another 80% that's produced elsewhere. So I asked, okay, what are the most polluting industries on the planet? And this is what I found. Energy and heat production are the number one polluters on the planet. So the burning of fossil fuels and coal plants or oil or anything like that, things that you're using to produce electricity, by the way, hello. <laughs> the things that you're using to produce electricity and produce heat are the biggest polluters on the planet. Second below that is agriculture. That is also something that's resource heavy, but we all need to eat, right? So, you know, we, we can't look there too much. But this third one, and I found this to be the most interesting and I think we really should have been looking at this the whole time as the fashion industry and I'm not saying I went to art school so I'm not saying oh fashion industry they just what I'm saying is is this philosophy of every year or every six months we need to go out and buy new clothes is is that really environmentally friendly I don't think so uh, even if you're making those out of environmental materials and all that kind of thing you still have to put it on some vehicle to get it from point A to point B lastly I looked up who the biggest polluters on the planet were as far as country-wise. And China's number one, the United States is number two, and India is number three. All industrialized nations. So a lot of the problem relies in us, uh, the, the people that are producing and consuming products and things, unlike the a lot of the world, well, I don't want to say a lot of the world, unlike other parts of the world that, that don't really have much of anything and they're just kind of in the way. <laughs> of everything we're doing as industrialized nations. In the past, when I've talked about this topic, many of you have brought up uh, the electrical infrastructure, particularly in the US, not being up to task as far as uh, accommodating these, well, 75 million new electric vehicles that will be coming out. I looked into this and this is what I found. So electrifying all light duty vehicles by 2050 will require a 1% increase in electricity generation each year. So between now, which is 2025 and 2050, so that's 25 years, we need a 1% increase. So we need to increase 25% our, our output between now and then in order to accommodate these electric vehicles. To put this in perspective, um, electric production in the U.S. has increased by about 3% annually since 1950. Just to put this in perspective as far as things that are doable and things that are not doable and all that, let's think about you know the, the moon landing program. They, they, in 10 years, like uh, Kennedy said, well, you know, by the end of this decade, we're going to the moon. Barely made it, but we made it. Then you think about things like, uh, like the, the atomic bomb, they developed that in about eight months. So as far as time frame, I think when pressed, humans can, can really buckle down and do things. But my point with all of this is just to say, if we're trying to solve an environmental problem, I think we should 
go at it with a holistic approach and not just look at vehicles and say that they're bad, they're bad, they're bad and start banning them. I think that there's a lot more to this. If we start throwing away a bunch of stuff, we start making a bunch of vehicles that quite frankly, are an environmental issue in their production. So EVs front load their emissions. So the vehicle itself may not be producing emissions, but everything it took to produce that, all the, the mining, the strip mining, the other stuff that took place, the environmental waste that was laid in order to produce that quote unquote zero, well, to produce that zero emissions vehicle. I say quote unquote because I just talked about the electrical grid being one of the biggest polluters. That said, I'm not against EV. I'm not against electric vehicles. I'm not against any of this. I don't mind change. It happens. It's, it's part of life. I just keep going back to this thing where I, I don't believe that electric vehicles are the formula to save us from all of this stuff. I think our lifestyles, I think we have to look at the way we live in general, not just what we're driving in order to combat this environmental problem. Going back to number three on the polluter list, the fashion industry. If we go about this throwaway mentality that, oh, the, the phone's no good anymore, the battery won't charge, let's just chuck that, or just everything in our lives being throwaway, being disposable that creates huge piles of crap in landfills. That means we have to make more stuff. All of that contributes to more emissions and more strain on the environment. I don't think the planet cares if we're here or not. It's gone through mass extinctions in the past. It's still here. It'll be here long after the human race is gone. It'll be our fault if that happens, not necessarily the planet's fault. So stop, stop saying you want to save the planet but rather say you want to save yourselves. You want to save the human race. I think that marketing would work a lot better than save the planet. Hang on a second. I had another thought. I just finished having my breakfast and while I was sitting there having my breakfast, I thought of a really good analogy for my perspective on this move or this push towards EV vehicles. And that is the cartoon, The Simpsons. There's a character, Sideshow Bob. And Sideshow Bob, for whatever reason, is standing in a field full of rakes. And every time he takes a step, he steps on one of the rakes and it comes up and smacks him in the face. And he turns around and steps in another direction and the rake comes up and smacks him in the face. And every time it happens, he just, uh, and he, and he just keeps doing it. <clears throat> and that's the comedy there. But that's exactly the way I'm looking at this whole thing with EVs. My concern is that we're stepping on the rake because we're not looking at where we're stepping and we're going to get smacked in the face. So if we're going to produce, you know, 75 million vehicles or more, or yeah, if we're going to produce that many vehicles in order to solve an environmental problem when producing that, that many vehicles of that type produces or contributes to another environmental problem, are we just stepping on the rake? I think that's the takeaway, or that's the point I was trying to make here. That's my perspective. I just hope we're not stepping on the rake. It's a complicated issue, no doubt, but I think it's worth discussing, which is why I made this video. Feel free, fire up your keyboard and go down in the comments and let me know what your opinion on all this stuff is, what you think our best solution for going forward is, what you think of EV mandates of 2035, what you think of what these companies are doing, what these governments are doing, all these other things. We could talk about that down in the comments and perhaps that will inspire, inspire another video that I will do at some point in the future. But this is the end of this video and I'm going to move on to the next one. But I will remind you that uh, if you have automotive questions, airatthecarguide.com is linked in the description and is always there for you. I'm also going to say be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and well, keep thinking. It's important for us to think about things. Critical thinking is, well, I think that's what we really need more than EV vehicles. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.